Last week you learned all about how God is powerful and that we see that in creation. Today I want to talk to you about the fact that God is holy. But what does holy mean? Does it mean that God is like the Kimberly big hole? That something's been taken out of him? Does it mean he's like Swiss cheese with lots of gaps in him? No. Actually, what holy means is quite the opposite. It means that God is worthy of complete devotion and praise because of his perfect goodness and his perfect righteousness. It means that there is nothing that you can add to God to make him any better. He doesn't have any missing pieces. Because God is without flaw, only he is worthy to be praised. In fact, that's the first commandment God ever gave his people. He told them that they should have no other God besides him. Because only he is perfectly good. Only he is perfectly righteous. Only God is holy and worthy to be praised. Last week we introduced a verse to you from Romans 1.20 that we want you guys to remember and store in your hearts so that you have it with you always. This is what it says. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. And so even this verse draws us to remember that God is holy. It tells us that when we look at creation, we can see God's divine nature. We can see that he is perfectly good and perfectly righteous when we look at all that he has made. In fact, when he made things right in the beginning, he stopped and said, this is good. And that goodness reflects the divine nature of God. It shows us that God is holy. We've got some actions that will help you guys to remember this verse. And so you can watch on now and you can see part two of those actions. His eternal power and divine nature. Before we go any further, I want us to take a moment to pause and pray. Let us open up our hearts to God and ask him to reveal to us from the Bible that he is holy and to show us that only he is worthy to be praised. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that we can gather together around the Bible this morning and learn more about you. Thank you that because what we are about to read comes from the Bible, we know that it is true. And Lord, we ask that today you would speak to us through the words that we read and show us that only you are holy. Only you are perfectly good and righteous and worthy to be praised. And Lord, would you show us if there's anything in our hearts that we are giving greater glory to than you. Lord, would you have your way this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So today's story is all about a tower and a time when God's people got so distracted building a tower that they stopped listening to his voice. Now I have two little boys, Sam and James, and they love to play with Lego. And they will often build Lego towers and see who can build the biggest, strongest, most colorful tower so that they can brag and say that they're the best or I'm the winner or my tower is bigger than your tower so that I'll come along and tell them, good job, you built the best tower. And when they get so distracted building their towers, they also stop listening. I can call them and say, guys, it's time to pack away, or go wash your hands for supper, or can you help mommy set the table? And they don't hear a thing. Or if they do hear me, they'll reply, we're not finished yet, or five more minutes, please, mommy. Or I'm not hungry, even though I know that they're hungry because it's supper time. You see, when we get so focused on something that we think will bring us joy or success, we often stop listening to the voice of God. And that's what happened in today's story. And so I want you guys to pause this video now and read our Bible story out of the book of Genesis. You can either read it on your Bible story card that you got in your in the bag packs, or you can read it in a Bible that you have at home together. So hit pause now and go read that story. Whoa, did you see what happened there, what God did? Well, we're going to test you and find out now. A slide is going to pop up with three questions that I want you guys to discuss together. So hit pause and let's see if you are listening. So did you 
guys see what God did there? He scattered the people, stopped their building plans, confused their languages because they had devoted themselves to something other than him. They had devoted themselves to a task that was going to bring them glory. That was all about them and not about God. And they had stopped living obediently to him and following his commands. You see, God wasn't happy when they had gotten distracted with their project. Because God isn't happy when we choose to worship things other than him. Only God is perfectly good and righteous. Only God is holy. Only God is worthy of our complete devotion, trust and obedience. Fortunately, our story doesn't end there. Yes, our disobedience scattered us. And that wasn't the only time it happened. God scattered his people many times in scripture because of their disobedience. But he gave them an everlasting promise that he would gather people from all over the world to praise him once again. And thanks to Jesus, we're seeing that gathering happening. People from all over the world are uniting to praise God. Not just now, but we'll get to do that forever. Because as we read in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 10, one day people of every language and every color will join in with the angels and cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Disobedience scatters us, but obedience and faith in Christ gathers us. While disobedience scatters us not just from God, from others, obedience in Christ unites us together as the family of God and calls us to worship God the way we were made to worship. Isn't that an amazing truth? So here's the tricky part. As I've just said, we were made to worship. We are always worshiping something, but we're not always worshiping God. So if you're not worshiping God, what are you worshiping? Are you worshiping yourself? Do you think that you're the king of the castle? Are you trying to build the tallest tower or get the best grades or be the prettiest or the best on the sports field so that you will get recognition and have people tell you, great job, you're awesome? Or are you worshiping something else, maybe a person or a possession? Do you think that celebrities are fabulous? Do you spend more time reading up about them and their lives than you do reading God's word? Or do you treasure your PlayStation or your cell phone above anything else? Is that the thing that would make your heart break if it was taken away from you? You see, anything good that we see in a person or an object is merely a reflection of the creator who made it in the first place. And so every time you want to stop and appreciate something in yourself or in somebody else, you should be stopping and praising God for that thing. And so this is my challenge to you this week. If you do something really well this week, would you stop and praise God? If you see someone else do something really great this week, would you stop and point them to God? Because the Bible tells us that if we are going to boast in anything, we should boast in the Lord. So this week, would you take time to celebrate God and thank Him for everything good and perfect that you see and experience? And so before we head into a time of worship today, I want us to pause to pray one more time. But this time, I'm not going to pray for you. I want you to pray together as a family. Before you pray, would you take a moment to talk to each other? Maybe share something today that God has highlighted to you, that you've placed great importance on, something that you are giving your complete adoration to or devotion to that isn't God, something that you are giving greater worth in your heart than it deserves. And then would you ask God to fill your heart with worship for him today? To help him remind you of his greatness and his holiness and all the things that make him worthy of praise. And if you need a gentle reminder, a reason to praise God today, just look outside your window and see in nature his divine nature reflected. To see his goodness and his righteousness in all that he has made. And I'm sure you will have a reason to praise him. So let's pause and pray and then we're going to sing some songs together out of the overflow of this praise that we're trusting God to fill our hearts with. Guys, today as we've looked at the holiness of God, we've reminded ourselves that God deserves to be worshipped. That he alone is worthy of praise and adoration. And so that's what we're going to do now together with these songs. So I want to invite you to get up and jump around. 
and praise the name of Jesus with me. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, and praise His name. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, and praise His name. Let's clap our hands. Let's dance around. Let's stomp our feet and sing out loud. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around. Everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, and praise His name. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around. Everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, and praise His name. Jesus, we gotta get up, turn around, jump around, and praise His name. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, and praise His name. And praise His name.
Yes, Lord, that is the declaration of our hearts today. We will worship you for who you are. Holy. Perfectly good. Perfectly righteous. Lacking in nothing, God. Thank you that that is who you are and that who you are never changes. Lord, thank you that you and you alone are worthy to be praised. How special it is that we get the chance to do that together. Help us to always put you first, to always remember who you are, and not to try to steal glory for ourselves. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.